Hello friends, I'm Tim Wildsmith, and in this video we're going to be taking a closer look at two new Bibles from Zondervan in the NRSV Updated Edition. Okay, the NRSV updated edition is here. I've got two new Bibles from Zondervan. I did an unboxing video with these. A lot of comments, a lot of people asking questions about them. So I wanted to do a full review. I'm gonna basically do two Bibles in one review and kind of show them both to you. I have the leather soft edition of the personal size of this Bible. Really great, looks and feels great. And then they sent me the premier collection edition of the full size edition. And this is just absolutely, this is the nicest piece of goatskin I think I've ever seen on a premier collection Bible from Zondervan. It's absolutely gorgeous, super soft and floppy. It just wants to roll up. I mean, it, I'll give you a closer look here in a second, but it's just, it's a really, really great Bible. Now, I do need to make some comments about the fact that this is the NRSV updated edition. It's an update to the NRSV translation. They've been working on this for several years. The NRSV originally came out in 1989 in the complete um, version of it, and it's based on the RSV from back in the 1950s. And so what I did was I read the the preface from the translators and kind of read more about the translation process. It sounds very much like they went through the process you would expect them to go to. They, they looked the latest and the greatest as far as the Hebrew manuscripts, the Greek manuscripts. They had a bunch of different scholars working on this and going back and forth. And they did make some changes. They said they made about 12,000 significant changes in the text and about 20,000 overall. So you, a, you think that sounds like a lot. B, the Bible has a, a ton of words and a ton of punctuation. So these little changes might not reflect themselves. So what I did was I opened up some of my favorite passages in my NRSV Bible that I'm reading through the Bible in a year with, and I compared them with these new ones. And you know what? I think like 90% of them, they were exactly the same. Like they had not been changed. So that kind of shows you there's, even when they make a lot of changes, they're not making changes everywhere. Most of it was exactly the same. Some of it was like punctuation or a word here that kind of it just sounds a little bit different or, or the way they did the word order. Honestly, the, the biggest one I noticed was Genesis 1-1. Now, if I said, what does Genesis 1-1 say to you? What are the first three words of Genesis 1-1? In the beginning. Well, that's not what it is. That's what it was in the NRSV. Now, the NRSV update edition, it says, when God began to create the heavens and the earth. That feels a lot different. It like caught me off guard when I saw that on the page. There's a footnote down here that says, or in the beginning God created. So they're like, yeah, but they decided to, to rephrase that. I'm sure that decision was based on looking at the Hebrew text of Genesis 1 and trying to figure out the best way to render it in English. So I, I, I will say this. I know there's been a lot of conversation about the NRSV update and the NRSV over the years. A lot of people just write it off as like the liberal translation. I, I really don't like that phraseology just because... I think it comes from an ecumenical, more academic perspective. It's used in a lot of different churches around the globe. And so maybe here in America, in like evangelical circles, we tend to kind of think it's something something other or something different. But I've used the NRSV a lot over the last few years, seminary, um, teaching in the college class that I'm teaching now, just reading through the Bible in a year right now. And I think it's a really good translation of the Bible that has been faithfully rendered by scholars who are, are have all of the right intentions, as in all of these other English translations. There's so many, there's little quirks here and there, but I think across the board, everyone's trying to do a good job in rendering it faithfully. I know that there has been conversation about certain places where they've made decisions that people disagree with, and you know what? That's going to happen, right? Like, we are all interpreters. We're literally, think about how complex the process is from taking ancient writings in ancient languages that aren't even really spoken anymore and getting those to make sense in English and to wrestle with the, what they meant in those cultures, which are totally different than our culture. And there's a lot going on there. And so that's why we have these different translations, more literal ones, more uh, thought for thought ones. All of those things really kind of go into this process of, of making translations. I can sit here and say, I've read through some of this. I've done some comparison. I feel pretty good about it. There's a couple places, yes, where I've been like, hmm, I wonder why they made that decision. But by and large, I think this is a solid translation that's going to be um, very readable for a lot of people, kind of um, uh, in that kind of vein of, of word for word, but a little bit more readable than maybe some of the other um, more literal Bible translations. So, um, and, and particularly for these editions from Zondervan, they just look great. 
they feel great. They're, they're really, really nice. So I'm excited to show you these to you now. I'm going to do an overhead, a side by side, and kind of show you how they're, how they're made. But these are the NRSV updated edition Bibles from Zondervan. Okay, two for one, the full size edition of the NRSV UE Holy Bible with Apocrypha here on the left. This is the Premier Collection Edition, the personal size edition over here. Um, so really, I'm going to bring in the two boxes. Oops. You see NRSV UE Holy Bible with Apocrypha. Then you have the personal size edition. The, the layout, the, the design on the inside is the same. This is just a smaller version of the Bible. These ones only come in leather soft editions and uh, they have with and without the Apocrypha. So it kind of has this little sleeve like that. Same over here, but then they did a Premier Collection edition um, with the Apocrypha for this and this beautiful black goat skin. So I'm going to walk through both of these. Let's do this. Let's start with the full size edition because it's kind of the standard. This Premier Collection edition, a gorgeous, gorgeous piece of soft goat skin. This is the softest piece of goat skin I've ever seen in the Premier Collection by Thomas Nelson or Zondervan. So I mean, it looks really nice. Perimeter stitch. It's got a nice little shine to it raised spine do you see how this bible just wants to roll up i mean it's literally so floppy raised spine hubs holy bible there you see it does say new revised standard version updated edition it comes with three ribbons black purple and gold those look really nice it has purple under gold art gilding on the pages it does have the gold gilt line around the inside it says goat skin leather cover the ISBN number there in the very back. This just, I mean, it looks and feels really, really great. As far as the size goes, pretty standard, six and a quarter by nine and a quarter. And this is about an inch and a quarter thick. So it's not, it's not too thick. So I'm gonna open this one up real quick. This is edge lined black goat skin, Smythe's own binding presentation page. Open this up. I'll show you the copyright page. There's all the information about this. Updated edition, printed in China, designed by 2K Denmark. Table of contents. So you do get the Old Testament, the Deuterocanonical Apocryphal books, all here in a separate section, and then the New Testament, if you want to freeze frame that and see which ones are included. There you have that right at the table of contents. You see this little cross logo is going to be there on every page of the Bible. Here's the uh, to the reader from the National Council of the Churches of Christ in the USA. So that's what I was talking about. Oh, sorry, that's the preface to the NRSV updated edition is what I was talking about reading in the intro. There you see those crosses are at the top of every page. I pointed this out. Um, you get a few abbreviations and things. I pointed that out, those crosses, um, in the unboxing video, and someone said, hey, do you like that? And I was like, well, I, I do like it. It's, it's slightly different. They had a similar design that wasn't a cross. It was like these little triangles on the previous editions of the Premier Collection and just the NRSV um, from, uh, from Zondervan. And I like this because for me, it's like, well, even when you're here in the Old Testament, there's, it's, the Bible is pointing to the cross. I think about how the Bible Project calls the Bible the unified story that leads to Jesus. So that's there. So here you go. Two column text, red accents on the page for the, um, the book title, the section headings, the chapter titles, even the verse numbers are going to have those red accents. There's a thin red line at the bottom of the page, and then you get your textual footnotes at the bottom. There's not um, cross-references in this Bible, but it's a 10-point NRSV UE comfort print typeface. Looks really nice. Very readable. I said in the unboxing video that I thought this was perhaps a slightly updated um, edition of the comfort print for the NRSV because it said NRSV UE. I compared this side by side with some of my previous Bibles and it really does look very, very similar. So perhaps they changed it slightly, but it's very, very similar to the previous NRSV comfort print typeface. You see when we get into these more poetic sections throughout the book, it's a paragraph format everywhere, but you're also going to get that poetic formatting for poetic settings. Um, I mean, just really, really beautiful. You get this like purple kind of uh, page dye kind of surrounding the text. I think it's really easy to read. It's a generous 10 point typeface and these comfort prints are designed to be um, really easy to read. So it is line matched text. Um, as I said, when you get to the end of the 
Old Testament, I'm almost there. Let me get to Malachi. And so after Malachi, you're going to get the Deuterocanonical books here in its own section. And then at the end, I think it's 4th Maccabees. Is that the last one? Yes. End of 4th Maccabees. You go into the New Testament. Everything stays the same. It's not a red letter Bible, but it does have these red accents, which I think really, it breaks up the page in just enough of a way to kind of, uh, it, it's easy on the eye to me. I like the red verse numbers. It makes it where you can find your place. It gives some, some uh, literally color to the pages and some interest to the pages, which I think I like that compared to just straight up black letter text, which can um, get hard so you can kind of see how these different sections flow together. So I like that a lot. Um, moving forward to the end, and then the, those, that cross is there on the book pages, or the book uh, title pages of each book as well. And you get to the end, Revelation ends on page 1315. You get a few pieces of lined notebook paper back here. You get your um, word about the type. This says, this Bible was set in the Zondervan NRSV version updated edition typeface. It was originally commissioned for the New Revised Standard Version of Zondervan. So I don't know if it's I don't know if it's just been updated because they've updated the name of the translation or if there were some slight tweaks to it. But um, maybe Klaus and some of his folks there will leave a comment and let us know for sure. But as far as this goes, just a, a very, very premium. This is the Premier Collection Edition. It feels fantastic in hand. Really lovely paper. Nice design typesetting. It has the Apocrypha in there. So it just really, really sharp. I'm going to set that one right there. I've been bringing the other one in, same Bible on the inside, um, not the same, uh, not the same specs though everywhere around. So this is one of the leather soft edition that has like a design in there, which is one of the things they can do with synthetic leather. So it looks really good. It's got some tooled ribs on the spine as well as some stitching that goes around in the spine. This is like a brown leather soft, two ribbons instead of three. It does not have dye on the pages, but it does have some gold gilding on there. Pretty simple on the inside, paste down liner. It's still going to be a smite zone binding. The biggest difference you're going to notice is the size. So this was six and a quarter by nine and a quarter. This one, if I kind of put it down there, it's about five and, and uh, 5.375. What is that? Five and an eight, five and three eighths by eight and three eighths. So almost an inch smaller all the way around, but it's still about the same thickness because again, it's got 36 GSM paper and it's the same typesetting. So it's the same number of pages and everything. I don't think this is the premium European Bible paper. I think it's a different type of paper. Um, just when I compare the two, this has like a, 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 a sheen to it, a texture to it that this one doesn't have. I could be wrong about that, but it seems to me like this is a slightly more opaque paper um, as well. But this looks really great, and it's just a smaller version of it. They're calling it the personal size NRSV updated edition Holy Bible. So main difference is going to be the different type of material on the cover, the overall size, and then kind of the embellishments and things like that. Once you get to the inside, it's just an eight and a half point uh, type size versus a ten point type size. But again, this is pretty pretty easy to read if you want to um, to have a slightly bigger typeface you can go with the bigger one, but if you don't need that, if you have good glasses or you have good eyesight, um, which not all of us are blessed with, then you could come down here and just have a slightly more uh, portable version of this Bible. But both of them look really great. I like the typesetting. It's pretty, like I said, it's simple. It's straightforward. It's a two-column paragraph format Bible um, with this new translation, and I think for people who are looking for nice versions of that Bible to have with them, you've got a couple different options. Obviously, you can get an even nicer version over here with the premium edition, but they also make um, this full-size one with these um, less expensive, uh, less dolled-up uh, leather soft editions as well. So you've got some great options here. So there you have it, two new NRSV updated edition Bibles from Zondervan. I would love to know your thoughts, so leave me a comment and let me know. If you already have one of these, I know these are out there already, and a bunch of people, I've seen posts on Facebook and Instagram of people who got these. Leave a comment, let us know what you like about it. If you have questions, drop those in the comments as well, 
and I will get back to you with an answer. If you scroll down and check out the video description on this video, I'll put links to where you can purchase one of these. I'll put links to where you can find me on Instagram and Facebook. There's also a link to where you can join and become a member of my channel right here on YouTube. If you haven't already done that, check that out. If you're not subscribed to my channel, maybe you should start there and just subscribe to the channel, hang out with us for a while, see if you like it. And definitely if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button for me. I appreciate you as always. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.